Now, could we see a crackdown on parcel delivery times? Maybe, because hundreds of you have been sharing your stories with Breakfast over the last couple of days. Well, now, we've had an apology from Every and a uh, warning from the industry watchdog, too, after the coverage of this story here on the programme yesterday. Nina has all the details, so they've said sorry. Yeah, we got so many messages yes. yesterday from viewers. It's really chimed with a lot of you at home. Good morning. Well, you told us they listened. Since yesterday's breakfast, we've had hundreds of stories of bad service from every. From parcels being delivered to the wrong place, to not showing up at all. And now, as Sally was saying, every have apologised and acknowledged things weren't good enough. They've also been warned they could face tougher regulations unless things get better. A reminder of what's been happening. Well, on top of the usual December pressures, parcel firms say the Royal Mail strike added to the sheer volume of deliveries. Thank you for letting us know about your experiences. We have let every know some of your stories. Here are some of them. I sort of set my heart on these four presents, so I, I couldn't get them. In the end, I had to just give money vouchers. So I don't know really that I would want to use every again because I don't feel like I can actually rely on them. And, and certainly if a company was using every now, I think twice before I would actually purchase anything from them. I left a clear notice asking them to deliver my parcel, an espresso machine worth hundreds of pounds to a neighbour. As you can see, it was left on my doorstep next to the notice. My frustration is, is because I'm a small business. We have lost customers, obviously, through it because they they look at it personally that it's actually, you know, our business that are failing to, you know, to provide their goods, and that's the most frustrating thing I find of all. I have had every deliver a parcel and leave it out at the back of the house and out in the rain without letting us know it had been delivered. All I can say is thank you, every. I'm aware that my experience isn't the same as lots of other people, but our personal experience is that we have had great um, service from every. Our delivery person has been um, consistent for the last, at least the last couple of years. Um, Yvonne is always really friendly, smiley, but most importantly, always ensures that our parcels are delivered safely and securely. She um, perseveres to make sure that they get to us. On December the 18th, we booked Every to collect two parcels from us. It's now January the 10th and both are still here. Another we sent arrived 10 days late and damaged. It looked as if someone had kicked it around. I ordered a collectible item in, from the States um, in September. Every said they delivered it, but they'd actually dumped it outside on a communal doorstep near to a block of flats where I live. Um, it took some time to arrange a, a refund, but I, I managed to find it again in the UK and the seller sent it to me again and every have lost it. And I can't, can't contact every to find out where it is. Um, it's just gone missing. Well, here's the response from Every. They told us they are sorry. Some customers are experiencing delays and they say they've been impacted by high demand, staff shortages and bad weather conditions. They have admitted the service hasn't been as good as they'd have liked and they said they will now focus on recruitment. Well, meanwhile, the regulator Ofcom told us that this just shouldn't be happening. They say they are strengthening regulations to make sure that you as customers are treated fairly. They say things don't get better if they don't handle complaints better, better protect disabled customers, well, they'll have to consider enforcement action. Let's find out more about the pressures parcel firms are facing. Kylie Aldridge has her own logistics company, which delivers packages for every and joins us this morning. Hello, good morning to you. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, we heard there, Kylie, from people who've been in touch with Breakfast. Some people have had a fantastic experience of every. They've built up a personal relationship with their delivery drivers. Others have had a howler where they're still waiting on things ordered in November. Why is there such a difference depending on where you live? Well, <laughs> the model itself is uh, it, it's a good model. It's built on having your um, your own local friendly delivery driver who's perfectly contactable, um, who gets to know exactly where you'd like your parcel left. Um, and, um, and where that model works, 
the service is going to be fantastic and people are going to be really pleased because, um, you know, they know the person that is going to be delivering to them and they know the service they're going to get. So that is um, that is how, how it's meant to work. Unfortunately, there is an issue with recruitment across um, the entire industry. Um, lots of people during the pandemic were on furlough and there were loads of people that were lining up to take delivery jobs. And as that has um, the that situation settled down, um, there just isn't, um, we just don't have that level of people now that are looking for work in the industry. So there is some inconsistency. Is there an issue with working conditions for drivers? I spoke to one who said he gets pennies per parcel and one day it might be a few parcels, the next day he's overwhelmed. And so it's very difficult for him to plan his working week, to plan his budget. Who would want a job like that? The, I, I mean, when people uh, join the company, they know that the price varies on the amount of parcels that are available on that day. And that that just depends on how many parcels are in our network, how, literally how many parcels you, the general public, are ordering. Um, but, um, yeah, I think over time we've been really impacted by things like rising fuel costs. Uh, the company have tried to put some things in place. Uh, is it enough? I don't think so. So, um, yeah, I think drivers could be paid more. Uh, there is a process as well that where um, people can apply for to, to have a higher rate, to have their rate looked at. Um, and across the board, um, my personal opinion is that, yes, uh, couriers should be having an increase where we're now seeing this rising cost of living as well. Um, that is going to make a massive impact on whether or not drivers, once they've um, entered the business, whether they stay or not. That's really interesting. So do you think more widely the delivery industry needs to catch up with how the market's changing? Absolutely. And it's not just every. It's, it is literally across the entire industry. I, I feel I think it's a real shame that every have been um, accused of ruining Christmas throughout the media. Uh, the reason that we are so overloaded is because other delivery companies haven't been um, delivering their parcels. So that means that we've had more uh, than we would normally have at Christmas. It's normally high anyway at Christmas. And the other thing w that we found is that usually we look for um, like a, after Christmas, there's a bit of a January slump where everybody gets a bit of a break. And if there's anything to catch up on, that's like the perfect time to catch up on it. Unfortunately, this year, um, where there's still strikes and uh, there's, I think there's a calendar of strikes, in fact, people are still choosing to, to use alternative delivery services where they may have used um, other ones. Uh, and, um, and that has meant that we have been continuously overloaded. So if those volumes haven't dropped like they would normally do. Kylie, thank you so much for your time there. That was a really good explanation of how it works and why there's so much pressure on the industry. Good luck, Kylie, with the upcoming months because, John and Sally, it doesn't look like this is calming down anytime soon. It's not going to get easier, is it? No. Nanina, don't go too far away. We have a story in our newspaper review that you might be interested in. Oh, yeah. So keep listening. Does it involve food? Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> Does. More specific than that. <laughs> yeah. Inspired by yesterday. More to come in our post box and our inbox this week. Pasties. It's pasties. <laughs> no. But close to that, deliveries. Your experiences with the parcel delivery firm Every. Yes, Nina's been taking a look at them for us and it hasn't been pleasant, has it? No. Yesterday we talked about Every. Just in case people don't know who they are, they are a firm who theoretically uh, collect and deliver parcels to your doorstep. We talked about it yesterday, honestly, literally hundreds of messages from viewers in our inbox via social media. We've had more come in this morning. This from Claire in Somerset. She's waiting for parcels sent uh, using the next day service. They were sent on the 15th of December. She contacted them. They said it would be 10 days or so. Since then, comms have gone dead. Leon, someone else who got in touch to say it's just so frustrating. It's OK that it hasn't gone smoothly, but please, we need to be able to communicate with them. Uh, Brendan says every deliberate pun, is misdelivered. I never buy from firms that use them for that reason. And that highlights what we spoke about earlier, the knock-on effect for businesses who use them as a service. Although Sarah got in touch, and I have to stress that we've had a few of these, my courier is amazing. He's usually early, he's never been late, he's the best courier we've ever had. 
and it just highlights the fact that it is quite literally a postcode lottery when it comes to every drivers. Um, every have apologised. Um, they told us they know things aren't good enough and will focus on recruitment. And the regulator, Ofcom, said uh, they will have to pull their socks up or face tougher regulations. Now, we spoke with the logistics operator earlier and she said, yes, recruitment is an issue. And part of that are the working conditions for every driver. Some of them are paid pennies per parcel. They don't know what the working pattern will look like. And that doesn't bode well for staff retention. They also stressed that it's not just every, because of all mail strikes, there's been extra volume on every delivery service. But I think it just goes to show that over lockdown, we increased our online shopping, it put pressure on delivery services. The infrastructure, the regulation isn't quite there yet to hasn't cope with caught it. up. Quite yeah. seasonal as well, isn't yeah. it? Christmas. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I did get a Christmas present through the post on Monday, though, so did that you? was a nice late surprise. Yeah. So. <laughs> you don't have to send it back to <laughs> you. Wasn't expecting it. Oh, no, it's lovely. Okay. Not going to complain good. to Santa then. <laughs> it's what, sorry? Not going to complain to Santa then. Not this year. No. Nina, thank you very much. Our next story, because could we now see a crackdown on parcel delivery firms? Hundreds of you have been sharing your stories with us over the last couple of days. Yes, stories of delays and damage to parcels. And now we've had an apology from every and a warning from the industry watchdog. Nina is across this for us this morning. Nina, it's really gathered pace, this, hasn't it? Because it's so frustrating yeah. when it goes wrong. It should be a simple process, and then you end up spending time and money on something that was meant to be easy. Yeah, good morning. Well, you told us, and they say they're listening. Since yesterday's breakfast, we've been inundated with stories of bad service from every, literally hundreds of them, from parcels being delivered to the wrong place, to not showing up at all, and a whole load of frustration trying to resolve the issues. Well, now, every has apologised and acknowledged that things haven't been good enough and it's been warned it will face tougher regulations unless things get better. A reminder of what's been happening then. Well, on top of the usual December pressures, uh, parcel firms say the Royal Mail strike added to the sheer volume of deliveries. Thank you, thank you so much for getting in touch with all your messages. We did let every know about your stories. Here are some of them. I sort of set my heart on these four presents, so I, I couldn't get them. In the end, I had to just give money vouchers. So I don't know really that I would want to use every again because I don't feel like I can actually rely on them. And, and certainly if a company was using every now, I think twice before I would actually purchase anything from them. I left a clear notice asking them to deliver my parcel, an espresso machine worth hundreds of pounds, to a neighbour. As you can see, it was left on my doorstep next to the notice. My frustration is, is because I'm a small business. We have lost customers, obviously, through it because they, they look at it personally that it's actually, you know, our business that are failing to, you know, to provide their goods. And that's the most frustrating thing I find of all. I have had every deliver a parcel and leave it out at the back of the house and out in the rain without letting us know it had been delivered. All I can say is thank you, every. I'm aware that my experience isn't the same as lots of other people, but our personal experience is that we have had great um, service from every. Our delivery person has been um, consistent for the last, at least the last couple of years. Um, Yvonne is always really friendly, smiley, but most importantly, always ensures that our parcels are delivered safely and securely. She um, perseveres to make sure that they get to us. On December the 18th, we booked every to collect two parcels from us. It's now January the 10th and both are still here. Another we sent arrived 10 days late and damaged. It looked as if someone had kicked it around. I ordered a collective item in, from the States um, in September. Every said they delivered it, but they'd actually dumped it outside on a communal doorstep near to a block of flats where I live. Um, it took some time to arrange a, a refund, but I, I managed to find it again in the UK and the seller sent it to me again and every have lost it and I can't can't contact every to find out where it is um, it's just gone missing 
You can feel the frustration there. So what are your rights when things go wrong? Helen Dudney is a consumer rights expert and joins us this morning. Hello. Thanks. I want to start by saying we have had lots of messages. Uh, Sarah, Yvonne this morning, among those saying they've built up a really good relationship with their every delivery driver in comparison to some of the horror stories we've heard there. Why is there this variation, this postcode lottery? I think it's a, it's a mixture of things. There's pressure on the system. They can't recruit in certain places and they can in others. There's a high turnover of staff. So it, it varies around the country as to, as to what the problems are in recruitment it's quite often. It's literally potluck. Mm -hmm. um, if things go wrong and they simply disappear, ultimately, where does responsibility lie? Should we be chasing the delivery company or should we? does it lie with the retailers you're shaking? Yeah, yeah. It's, always, it's always with the retailers. So whoever you've paid the money to so if you've paid your money to company x and they've used you know the courier company it's still them so whatever they say even if they say contact the courier you don't your contract under the consumer rights act 2015 is with them let them find the parcel or give you a refund so keep pushing with the retailer Absolutely. whoever's taken your cash that's really good to know what about sending parcels because we've heard from people this morning who've used every and other delivery companies and things just haven't arrived what do you do if you just can't get hold of them it is really difficult. You can sort of go on their online chat, but if you do, keep a record of it because they might say they're going to send you the chat. Quite often it doesn't happen, so take that screenshot so you can take it further if need be. Go on the CEO uh, email dot com website and get the ceo's details ceo is not going to respond personally but it does mean that you've got that that written correspondence and something sort of escalating and you possibly need to take out insurance if it's available for for, for big rice you know big items so it sounds like you have to be doubly vigilant if you're sending rather than receiving parcels yeah i think so because you were seeing sort of more problems with couriers and the other reason we're seeing more problems is because there is an increase in the use so therefore it might still be the same percentage that are going wrong but there's more of them ah, and you're feeling it more and um, can you ask to use a different delivery service if you have a preferred one you could ask but it's very unlikely because right. because the retailers will have their contract with whichever courier they're using so it might be that if certain couriers companies don't get their act together that the retailer may change their courier company okay and we've heard from people this morning who haven't used certain retailers because of their preferred delivery system which is frustrating for the retailer and um, every have said to us Things went wrong. We are sorry. Ofcom, the regulator, have said to us they could face tighter regulations if they don't pull the socks up. What would that look like? What would that mean for us? Well, it might be that they, they, they sort of instill fines and, and make it sort of stricter rules. But, you know, I think we'll, uh, we'll have to see if that actually happens and, you know, how long that will take. I think it's very unlikely. You look sceptical. Yes, very. <laughs> OK, thank you very much, Helen. So, I mean, the takeaway advice there is if you're receiving um, a parcel, then your contract is with the retailer, whoever you've paid the money to. If you're sending a parcel, you have to be doubly careful. Keep a paper chain, a screen grab chain, if you like, of every email, every live chat that you've had. Uh, but as Helen was saying, this isn't a problem that's going away because, John and Sally, it's around recruitment and we're seeing that across so many industries. We are, Nina.